another edition of the Rangers Coaches Show. I'm your host, Justin Adams, and I'm sitting here by uh, Mr. 100, I should say, and that's the head coach of the men's basketball team, Brady Bergeson. And let's talk about that number 100. You won your 100th career game as a head coach earlier this season. Coach, congratulations to you. Uh, what did that milestone mean to you? Well, uh, word circulated around to my coaching buddies, and they all gave me a bad time to ask me what the heck took me so long. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a nice, uh, it was a nice milestone, and I appreciate uh, um, the, the, the confidence. Uh, but it wasn't—I didn't realize it was anything that was on the radar screen. Some people, you know, mentioned it to me afterwards. And, you know, at this point in the season, you just got your head down, going fast. And, and you're just trying to get one, not trying to get one. Without a doubt. All right, coach, I got a stat for you. We'll play a little game with you, okay? Um, in your two and a half years at Regis University, you've won 41 games as the head coach. In the last six years before you arrived here at Regis University, guess how many games are won? How many? 41 games. So, there you go. You got a little stat there. Good math. I did not know that. <laughs> Without a doubt. Well, it's what I do. Um, what has been um, attributed to just the success that you've had here at Regis University in such a short time to be able to turn around the program? We came in uh, with a blueprint of uh, how we knew how to build a program. And what we try to do is, uh, regardless of what was here and who was here and what wasn't here and who wasn't here, when we first took over, it was about uh, building from scratch. And so we just we took that approach. Uh, we did it the one way that we know how to do it. And we did the best we could. We built around character and toughness and we recruited that way. Uh, we tried to outwork people and, and, uh, and keep our standards extremely high. Uh, in early days when you're growing and you're young, uh, and we did uh, certainly invest in youth uh, the first two years when we were quite young. And, um, you know, as long as it's quality and you built around that quality of the, of the human quality first, uh, the character and those characteristics that um, you want to build around, then it's just a matter of time and perseverance and, and putting those uh, qualities to work. So we just stuck, stuck to the script and we're still sticking to the script. We're certainly a works in progress. Um, but the success has come as a byproduct of that and um, we just try to make one good decision after another as best we can with the information we have and really try not to keep it much more complicated than that. No, without a doubt, you know, it's interesting when I look at your team right now, it's currently 12 and 4 on the year, 6 and 4 on conference play. Um, one of the things that's interesting, you talk about high character guys, and I can't think of any better than you know Jared Broadbeck as well as Dexter Sienko has been with you the whole way through, as well as Christian Little. And the funny thing about those guys is they both, or all three rather, um, average 15 points per game. Coach, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Um, what can you say about, or what has been done so that you can have a variety of scores and not just one player? Yeah, you know, we, uh, first of all, our system offensively is, is built around sharing the ball and, and finding the open person rather than, you know, specifically one guy or two guys. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of buy-in to that. And, um, you know, sometimes one guy's going and we try to play to that guy. Sometimes this guy and that guy are going and we try to play towards those guys and, and just make good decisions on the night. Um, we feel like we've got a pretty... Uh, uh, a good group in terms of um, just balance and we can come at uh, our opponents from a lot of different angles, we have a lot of different weapons and that plays to our strength. Well with the second half of your season you got a lot of good opponents, you have 12 games left in a regular season, um, seven of them will be right here at Regis University um, and you play against all the teams that are right above you, you play against Metro, um, you also play against Black Hill State, uh, Colorado School of Mines is the only team that is above you from the rankings that you play uh, on the road. Coach, talk about the importance, or rather, let me ask you this, what would you like to see from your team in the second half of the season in order to get yourself uh, best prepared and best set up for the uh, Army tournament? You know, there, I think at best maybe six points separates the quote-unquote top team from the bottom team. I don't know who's better on any given night, and that includes us, but the bottom line is for us is what I just said. We've got to if we play the way we practice and we do that consistently, we're going to be fine. Um, our, our biggest um, problem recently over the last month or so has just been simply game slippage in us. Uh, uh, you know, whether it's taking a shortcut or 
getting swept up in the emotion of the game, whatever the case is, game slippage can come on in different forms. Uh, but we haven't consistently uh, executed at the, at the level that we are in practice. We have outstanding practices, um, a lot of clarity, and the guys are, are really bought in and doing the right things. So if we can uh, play progressively more and more like that each and every day, that's our goal. And if we do that, we'll be at our best. I don't know how good we'll be, but we'll be at our best. Well, without a doubt, Coach, best of luck to you in the second half of the Thank season. You. Thank you. That is. Men's basketball head coach Brady Bergerson getting ready for the second half of the season. Have some really good teams that he will play against, starting off with two games put up against Fort Lewis as well against Adams State. So that's it from the men's side. When we return, we will go to the women's side and we'll have a chance to talk to Molly Marion as her team is sitting at 6-4 and four in conference play and see what the ladies will have to do in the second half of the season to get themselves ready for the RMAC tournament. We'll be right back on Regis Rangers Coaching Show. And welcome back to the Rangers Coaches Show. I'm your host, Justin Adams, the voice of the Regis Rangers. And I'm sitting next to head coach Molly Marin of the women's basketball team. And coach, you had a really, really good weekend going 2-0, beating Fort Lewis 74-70 in overtime, and then coming back and beating Adams State as well. Coach, number one, let's talk about the weekend. Um, start with the Fort Lewis game, a very, very huge win for your team. How would you grade that for it was, uh, it was very exciting. I wish uh, everybody could have watched the game, too. I think even for me, sometimes it, was, it happened so quickly, um, I think, especially in those last couple of minutes. We knew playing them, obviously, we've always had a great rivalry with them, playing them in the playoffs the last two years um, in that first round. And just have always you know, been, been very competitive games with them, down two with 32 seconds to go at their place. And, and just coming back playing them three weeks later, I think getting them on our home court was we were excited for it and, and being ready for the challenge and, and obviously being with them being 23rd in the country. Um, we were pumped and ready to go, but I think, you know, with us being down six or seven with a minute to go, I don't think any coach has that play drawn up that's going to get you get you those shots maybe that uh, <laughs> that happened there when the freshman hits two threes in the 40 seconds. So hey. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, the freshman she's talking about is Whitney Jacob, 22 points, 12 rebounds. Here's the funny thing. Whitney came in this game, only made two three-pointers all year long. In a span of one minute and two possessions, she made two three-pointers, especially the one that tied up the ball game. Coach, will you, go, will you have those type of plays where just the, I have to make something happen, and you see Whitney grab the ball as a freshman and shoot that rock with confidence and make it. Uh, what does that mean for her? Just only, not only her maturation, but what is she uh, brings to the team? Well, absolutely. I think, and in, in you talk about plays, and we have a lot of drawn ups. We grew up, you know, in certain situations as every coach do, but I think coaches talk about players more than they talk about plays, and that's what exactly what happened. So um, she was in that position, and, and Shantae, I think, made the, the right pass. She was guarded in, in one of those and, and made that extra pass, and Whitney was ready to shoot it and didn't hesitate. She's playing very confidently right now for a freshman and starting to grow into herself um, in, in our system and everything, too. So that's been awesome to see. Without a doubt, again, 22 points, 12 rebounds coming off the game against Westminster, which you had, what, 18 points, and 9 rebounds. I mean, just ridiculous stuff that we're seeing from this fabulous freshman. But also, there are other pieces to your team as well that's going very well on the squad. And I just think of the defense from Shelby Espinosa to go up against a young lady like Vivian Gray um, and to play her very well defensively. Um, but also, she gets a lot of rebounds as well. She's currently third in conference play um, in rebounds. What type of things does she do in order to, you know, in order to get these rebounds? Because she's not the tallest um, young lady out there, five foot eleven, but she skies high to get rebounds. What does she do? She does. Shelby's been unbelievable. I mean, she just she is the perfect example of. Um, we talk about our roles, of her fitting into her role and owning her role and being a superstar in her role, and then grows outside of it. You know, she had a game in Western so she was you know, seven for ten, seven for eleven, and so she grows and does other things too. But she never loses sight of the rebounding piece. And, and, and that's just something where she's so tenacious with her height, and, or with her lack of height, and just going after the basketball. I think it's just been a huge key for us and, and the wins we've had, especially lately. And you know, for us to start five people under 5'11 and lead the league in rebounding is, is pretty unbelievable. And I think it speaks to the character of our group and uh, willingness to box out and go after rebounding, rebounds and buy in. So, yeah, Shelby is definitely our, our catalyst that gets us going in that area. So. Also off the bench, you also have to talk about Jasmine Snipes. She pulls a lot of rebounds as well, so you don't miss anything when you go to your bench in that category. But you also talk about just the season as a whole. You started off the year 0 for 4. 
but I know how easy it is for a team at the early part of the season, especially with the very tough non-conference game um, schedule that you guys had, to go on the dunks. But then from there, you guys have improved eight and four since that point, make that nine and four since that point in the season. Coach, how has this team matured throughout the year and continue to get better and better? It's, you know, I scheduled that, so I definitely take responsibility for that. Coming off of a, you know, 23-18 and 18 last year in a tournament team and returning, you know, the guards that we returned and the confidence that we had, I thought that this was a group that would be able to handle and wanted to play the, on the bigger stage and play the bigger teams to prepare us for conference, and that's what that's for. And, and so it was. We were tested in the preseason, I certainly was. And, um, but I think going into conference, we had seen about everything that we could possibly see defensively. So I think, uh, you know, just us coming and growing, continuing to grow with each other, really with what is a still a young group, but two seniors, um, and you see some freshmen stepping up, and, and that camaraderie too, I think, between that upperclassmen and underclassmen. I really think our best basketball is, is ahead of us, and, and so I think it's been fun to see that, and it just, you know, we were challenged early, and that's what makes you stronger, and so I'm proud, really proud of this group for, for what they've done there, and, um, you know, winning four out of the last five, I think five out of the last... Three, uh, three of those have been double overtime or overtime. It's yeah, like, trust me, I would know. Okay, I just, I, trust me, there's a lot of end-of-game situations that are running through my brain trying to figure that out. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's just a testament to them and being able to grind something out, playing gutsy, playing together. And um, So I think that certainly our preseason, I would, I would hope, helped to test us a little bit for those situations. Well, you talk about your preseason test that you had early on in the year. Now you go up against a very tough four-game road trip, um, getting towards the end of the uh, conference season. And who are the players that have to step up? I mean, I would think initially have to be Barry Sigler, Majesty Robinson, but who are some other guys that have to step up in order for you guys to succeed? I think the success that we've had, particularly lately, we're moving the ball better in our offense, so we're utilizing both sides of the floor that a better too, and I think that's getting gotten everybody more involved. So I think I got to got to give credit to our post group. Uh, for stepping up in the last few weeks and, and making us harder to guard because our balance is there a little bit more, especially in the scoring end. They've always rebounded and they, they buy into the, the screening and the dirty work and all of those things. But I've got to give a lot of credit to that group to make us, you know, be more aggressive. Shelby and, and Jasmine and Whitney, as you said, and our guards know what they need to do. You know, they've been, Mary's been on the stage, and Majesty's played in those minutes with Shantae as well. So I think they know uh, their responsibilities as well. And I think just the balance of, of, of all of the position groups, I don't think you can really keep in on, on one player for us, and I think that's what's gonna that's what's gonna carry us, uh, you know, forward hopefully um, into to continuing to grow together and play together. Right. The next four, especially because the road stuff and Highlands is a tough road trip. We're gonna get get on the road there on Thursday, and then obviously at Pueblo uh, is a very tough place to play. So uh, we're ready. So that is it for the rest of our Rangers Coaches Show. I'm Justin Adams saying thank you so much for joining us on the January edition of the Rangers Rangers Coaches Show. God bless. Take care.